what was your reaction when you saw the news of the Trump assassination attempt? And now in the days that have followed all the evidence that's come out that's shown the Secret Service knew where the shooter was for some time. Do you believe this was a failure of the Secret Service? Yes. And that's why I do believe that the head of the Secret Service should have resigned. Um, and uh, I will tell you, it was absolutely a breach of protocol from the, from what I would have seen of the hearings um, from the testimony of Director Ray and so many others, there clearly was a breach. And it was horrific that anybody thinks that uh, engaging in political violence is the answer. Um, I, I will also say that um, Chuck Grassley and I have introduced legislation within the last two days to make sure that the head of the Secret Service is not an appointed position without Senate confirmation. There should be Senate confirmation in this process to make sure we have the best, most experienced person at the top of the ticket, excuse me, at the top of that agency. How would that make the system stronger or prevent what happened um, a couple weeks? Because right now the, the, this, the director's just picked by uh, um, one individual uh, without any vetting, without any uh, coming through the Senate confirmation process to ensure that they're, they have adequate experience, that long term, that uh, they will be there beyond any one presidency so that um, they are there for the for the at least for a 10 year period. And their focus is really about ensuring the agency itself has the adequate training, has the adequate resources and has can provide the necessary um, jobs uh, and um, protection that is necessary. And, and people forget it's not just the protection that Secret Service does. They do a lot of work in our communities when it comes to counterfeiting and uh, identity theft. So the, it, it's an important agency. It should be adequately funded. And the top of, the, uh, of that agency should be somebody that has experience that, that really we try to take the politics out of that process. You were in the chamber yesterday for a Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's speech, correct? Mm -hmm. um, some of your colleagues in the House and Senate chose not to go, uh, one of your colleagues held up a sign that called him a war criminal. Why did you think it was important to be there? Because I think it is important for us to continue to show alliance with the people of Israel, to uh, to stand and, um, and confront uh, him, uh, to really talk about the priority should be bringing um, uh, the hostages home, should be ensuring that we get adequate aid and assistance into Gaza for those innocent um, Palestinians and, and continue to support a ceasefire. That's what this should be. And if I'm not in the room, then I can't c confront him to talk to him about that and uh, and let him know those concerns. But I also uh, want to be there because at the end of the day, I think we should be uh, continue to be a, a close alliance with the people of Israel. I do not agree with everything Netanyahu uh, stands for and has said. I think there should be a two-state solution. I do think that to bring peace and stability to the region, we have to uh, consider the pa Palestinian needs there. So I don't agree with them on everything, but I do agree that we have to stand with Israel. From all the intelligence that you've seen in, in your role as a senator, I mean, do you think that um, that the IDF has committed war crimes in Gaza? That I am not going to go into some of the uh, confidential information that I've seen, uh, but there will be and there should be an adequate vetting of this at the appropriate time. Uh, you initially called on Americans to have Joe Biden's back. He obviously dropped out. Since then, you've endorsed Kamala Harris. Hey, Kamala Harris, excuse me. Um, how come? Because I, first of all, I'm excited to the fact that we have now a presidential nominee who knows the West. Listen, the Western issues are unique. She knows the West. She knows Nevada's issues. She understands it as a former attorney general. And I worked with her. We worked closely on issues that were impacting Nevada from going after the big banks to protecting our homeowners and individuals who were defrauded by foreclosure. We had a task force together. We've worked on so many issues. Uh, I am excited that now she gets to continue this work uh, and understands Nevada. She knows that it is about growing our economy. It is about creating jobs, right? It is about lowering those costs. She's talking about addressing the affordable housing that we see in Nevada, really, and across the country. There's a lot of work that still needs to be done. She understands it. She's a fighter. And I know she is somebody that will be uh, looking out for our, our families, the middle class, those people, and our businesses, and making sure that everybody has that opportunity to succeed. 
you've now called on Senator Bob Menendez to resign now that he's been convicted of bribery and corruption charges. Why did it you wait um, until he was convicted to call for his resignation? Uh, I think 30 some of your Democratic colleagues called on his res resignation long before that. Because I, I believe in the judicial process, and I think it is important for everybody who uh, has the opportunity um, uh, to go through that process. When you are getting charged with something, um, it is important that a jury and a judge, they weigh in and they make that determination, and they have in this case. Uh, I respect that process, uh, and uh, for that reason, that now that he is convicted, uh, that's why I came out and, and, and said he should step down. The notion of innocent until proven guilty, of course, is applies in our criminal system. But in terms of conduct befitting of a U.S. senator, you didn't think that the allegations, um, you know, that that he should have stepped down based on those allegations alone. Well, you can't pick and choose and say uh, that uh, at the end of the day, a criminal <laughs> allegation, you're innocent until proven guilty, unless you're an elected official. I think if you're innocent until uh, proven guilty in our system of justice, which I respect, uh, I think is totally uh, appropriate for, to wait for that process uh, and make sure that at the end of the day, the jury gets to weigh in, that the evidence is heard and the judge is a part of that process. That's that's our system of, uh, of justice. I believe in it, particularly as attorney and former attorney general. Uh, and it is important that we continue to support it. Has the now Harris campaign contacted you about vetting for a possible vice presidential pick? I am not interested in the vice presidential being the vice president. I would be honored, but no, I am very happy where I am uh, working on behalf of the people of the state of Nevada as United States Senator. And I take that very seriously. Uh, you support legislation removing the federal income tax on tips for service workers, correct? Um, how come? Keeping more money in the pockets of, of Nevadans is important. Uh, and we are a service industry in, in Nevada. And I know so many uh, that work in that industry. And if we have the ability to pass legislation that ensures that they can keep more of their hard-earned money in their pockets, then I'm all for it. 